Hi, Tina. My name is BJ Simmons. I'm from Physical Therapy. And we are going to be working on the ramp here. So um, I know that you are non-weight bearing on your right side. I would normally have the patient sitting in the wheelchair, but it would be in the way for this video, so I'm not going to have the wheelchair here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this gate belt on you and we'll keep both of us safe while I pop you on the ramp here. And as always, I'm going to put the gate belt so it's around the waist, um, kind of between where the ribs end and where the, where the pelvis is. Is that uncomfortable at all? No, it's okay. Okay, whenever possible, it's nice to do the stairs before you do the ramp because then this, the patient will already have the concept of what goes down first and second. So you'll hear me talking about, um, remember on the stairs we did this way or we did that sequence. Um, first of all, on the ramp, you need to know three different um, rules. One rule is about angle, one is about assisting, and one is about sequence. Okay, assisting will be the same as though you're on level ground. So you're always going to be behind and to the involved side of the patient. Um, <clears throat> the only exception to that is if it's a steep ramp, then you'll treat it the same as stairs, or you'll be behind into the low, I'm sorry, lower than the patient and to the involved side. Um, the sequence is going to be the same as on stairs. So whatever they do on stairs, as far as what goes first, second, third, will be the same as on the ramp. It's going to be easiest to remember that if you picture this ramp as being squared off stairs. If you can picture that in your mind, that'll help you remember, do the crutches go first, do the feet go first, you know, how far do the crutches go forward. That'll be helpful if you picture those as squared off stairs instead of picturing it as a ramp. Okay. The third rule is about angle, and there's, there's two separate rules on this. Um, first of all, this is only for going down, it's not for going back up the ramp, just for going down. As you're going down, every patient needs to be on an angle. If it's a non-weight bearing patient, they're going to angle, as they're going down, they're going to angle so that their non-weight bearing leg is lower than the strong leg. And so they would be on this angle. They're still going to walk straight down the ramp, they're just going to turn their body on an angle. Okay, make sure you express that to the student or to the patient. Um, if it's any other patient, uh, for instance, a partial weight-bearing patient, then you want the strong side down. That patient would be angled this direction as they're going down, including their crutches. So the crutches, and then they move their involved foot, and then their strong foot. That puts their strong foot lower to catch them in case they start to lose their balance or have some momentum, um, they can stop the momentum. Um, if there's a patient who is equal on either side, they still need to turn at an angle. It just doesn't matter which side is lower at that point. Okay, so um, if I were going to be teaching this patient, we're going to start off with her being non-weight bearing. So she's non-weight bearing on the right. We would have gotten her up out of her wheelchair. I would have demonstrated for her first. So we're going to say we've already done all that. Now we're ready to actually do the walking down the ramp. So I'm going to give you a face of the ramp. Um, the ramp starts approximately where this half wall is. So we will uh, walk up to the ramp first. So do your normal walking pattern crutches and step two. Okay, so now we're at the top of the ramp. I have my hover hand in place. My other hand is on the gate belt on the far side. I'm behind her into the involved side, just like I would be on level. Okay? So now we have the crutches go down first. Okay, her foot stays ahead of her. Okay. Your angle is going to be so that your strong side is angled down. So again, the crutches are angled and her body is angled. Okay. So bring the crutches down and then just set your strong leg between those crutches. The right foot is staying off the ground. A little more angle. Okay. So now her strong leg is not going to be Her strong arm is what's going to be able to stop her. The reason we don't want her turned at the same angle as the others, go ahead and turn the long leg here for a second. Because if she does this way, picture a long leg cast. It doesn't have to be a long leg cast, but if she had a long leg cast, you could get caught up on that upper part of the lane. Okay, so that's a way to remember it as well. Okay, so let's turn the top away. So she has lots of clearance for her sore foot. Okay, so let's go ahead and go the rest of the way down. A little more angle of percussion.
turn at the bottom. She's on level ground now, so she's going to turn just as though she were on level ground without a wing. So we're going to turn toward her strong side. She's going to do a fairly large arc to turn around, and it should be the same sequence that she would use on level ground. So crutches, and then step two. Crutches, step two. Yes. Okay, now she's at the beginning of the ramp, starting to go up. Um, we're going to treat this as though stairs. So again, picture those squared off stairs. Um, no angle this time, she's just going to face straight up. Okay, so she's going to bring her strong leg up first. Go ahead. Oops, we're still not moving. Okay. There you go. And then bring the crutches up even with the toes. Okay, and the strong leg up, crutches even with the toes. Okay, let's stop right there for a minute. We're going to take a time out. I want to show something so I can borrow your crutches. If the patient brings her crutches too far up, what happens? So if she says strong foot and then she brings her crutches up here, first of all, you can picture that as being up on the next stair, which wouldn't be um, very comfortable. But if she does that, basically, if she starts to fall backward, it's going to be a lot harder to catch herself. If she brings her foot up and the crutches just even, she has kind of a, where she can shift onto them to lean forward and catch her balance. Okay, so it's a lot easier to balance yourself by bringing those crutches just to your toes rather than up above your toes. Okay, so foot, stone foot, and then crutches. Okay, if she were having difficulty, whether it's going up or going down, there's a few uh, ways that you can regress the patient. One would be to move one crutch at a time. So go ahead and move one, I'm sorry, move your foot first, and then one crutch, even the feet, and then the other crutch. Foot, crutch, crutch. Okay. If she continues to have problem, if that doesn't get rid of the problem, you can have the patient use the rail. You would determine the rail by what she has at home. So you'd ask her, do you have a rail at home? Say yes. Yeah. <laughs> and as you're going up the ramp, what side is it on? The right side. Good choice. <laughs> okay, so what I would have for you is I'm going to have you go ahead and grab the rail here. Okay. Um, there's a couple of options. I'm going to let go of this so I can show these options. Okay. So if she doesn't have a lot of hand grips, hand grips and axillary pads on here, a lot of patients will be able to do this and still have their palm um, taking the weight. But when they do have a lot of extra width here, that's difficult to do. So more often, you're going to see where you kind of find the center of gravity of the, um, the, the balance point of that crutch. Make sure the palm is still on this handle, and then you can use the crutch, I'm sorry, the rail on the other side. Central point there. Balance. And then go ahead and put your palm back on your crutch. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead and put your foot up. And then bring both hands and even with your So this is going to provide a little more stability for the patient. Okay. Very nice. All right. We're going to go ahead and start up at the top again. And we can relax. You're going to be a different patient now. Okay. okay. If she were a partial weight-bearing patient, um, we're going to keep using that right leg just to be consistent. Um, so now she's using the three-point gait, um, also known as the protected extremity gait pattern. So this time when she goes down, she wants to leave, um, she wants to angle down with her strong side. So if this is her sore foot, she's doing partial weight bearing, she's going to angle this way because if she gets momentum going, she can stop herself with that strong leg. So again, the crutches are going to be um, angled and then her body is angled, and then Thank you. weak Bye. foot, strong foot. Touches, weak foot, strong foot. There she goes again. Okay? Here we go. I'm still going to be behind into the involved side. Okay, so we're yeah. going to go. I'm going to be kind of in the way, so I'm going to step back just a little bit here. I normally would be more in this area. Okay, so crutches down, and then your partial weight bearing on this foot, and then you now, if she angles too much, then she ends up crossing her legs. We don't want that. So just enough angle to have uh, some momentum stopped. 
and then make sure you're walking straight down toward the door there. Beautiful. Okay, the patient's doing really well and we want to progress. We can use the same progression that we would use on level. So this time I'm going to have you move both crutches and your sore foot at the same time. Okay, go ahead. So move this one at the same time as the crutches. There you go. Good. And watch a little more of an angle again. There you go. Good. You usually don't do too much of a step through on the get on the ramp. Uh, it's more of just the stepping to so go ahead and continue that. I'm going to go ahead and get in the normal position I would be in to be here. Okay, when she gets to the bottom, again, we're going to turn toward her strong side. Okay, so she can just use her normal, whatever gait pattern she uses on level. So if, if she were not progressed yet to moving that foot at the same time, then she would go back to her normal crutches and weak foot, strong foot. So that. If she were already progressed, then it's okay to be in that progression. Okay, coming up. Patient, this is going to be easiest again if you picture the ramp as being stairs. So when you went up the stairs, you went up with your strong legs. So just do that place, your strong leg forward. And what that does is that leaves her weak foot protected between the two crutches. Okay, then bring your weak foot up. And then the weak foot is protected by the other foot as you're bringing your crutches up. Okay, so strong foot, weak foot, that's the leading. Very nice. Okay, and if she's doing fine with that, we could do some progressions. If she's having problems, again, we could do the regressions that we talked about before. Yeah. Okay, are you good with that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, stop being patient for a minute. Come on up to the top. The last one we're going to show is the four point gate. Um, for the four-point gait, this is for a patient who has equal involvement on both legs. Um, they may have balance problems, they may have some uh, weakness, but both legs are equally involved. Okay, so for that one, the gait pattern on the level is crutch, opposite foot, the other crutch goes past those two, and then the opposite foot. On the stairs and on the ramp, it's, it doesn't match that. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is as we're going down, it's going to be crutch, crutch, foot, foot, as we're going up, It'll be foot, foot, crutch, crutch. Again, the sequence is the same as on the stairs. Okay? For this one, she still needs to be angled, but it doesn't matter which angle she's at. Um, so it's patient comfort um, for that. Um, I will still be assisting as though she's on level, so I'm going to be behind and to one side. It doesn't matter which side because she's equally involved. Okay? So um, let's start back here and do a couple of steps up to it. All right, so I'm going to be on this side so it's easier for the camera to see. So we're walking up to the, the ramp with crutch foot, crutch foot. Okay, and when she gets to the top of the ramp, which is right about here, now she's going to go, go with the crutch, crutch, foot, foot. So either crutch and then the other one, and either foot and the other one. Um, the only thing that matters is that both crutches go down before her feet start going down. Um, this is one where you could regress by using the rail. Um, you can't do too much else to regress, um, except maybe shorter steps or slower. Okay, when she gets down to the bottom, she would do her normal turn with the, um, the regular one for a second. So at the bottom, she would do the crutch opposite foot, crutch opposite foot. And then when she gets back to the ramp again, we'll just start right here. So come down here. And so now she's coming up. Okay, so we're going to again treat it like stairs. So this time it's going to be foot, foot, crutch, crutch. Doesn't matter which foot goes first, as long as both feet are ahead of the crutches. So foot, foot. Okay. And we 
to the top, she would just go into a normal walking pattern.